Hola, y'all. I tried a different setting on my video, so we shall see. I think it's, I think it's going to be better. We'll see. It's supposed to look more clear and realistic. Happy Wednesday. The kids' first day. Wow, it's dark out here. You're going to lose me, but you're going to hear my voice. But you'll lose my face in the dark. I need to add some more lights. I'll do that tomorrow. I'll try to remember to add some more lights because some of my lights are out on my porch. But it was the kids' first day back at school, but they only went half a day. So it was kind of crazy and hectic because it's a 20-minute drive for me one way. So by the time I dropped them off, came home and got just a touch of work done, it was time to go pick them up again. So tomorrow will be a little bit better because they're staying all day and I can get, I can get like work done. So anyway, we've had a full day and uh, just got in from church and it was such a beautiful service, a wonderful message. God's presence was just so strong and just so sweet. And it was so refreshing. Um, you know, I know that sometimes those midweek services, you know, sometimes you think, oh, I'm tired and I work and I have a, I've had a long day. And I get all that. I do. But there's just something about going in to worship God and leaving refreshed and leaving feeling better than when you came. And... Um, you know, I just want to say the effort is worth it. It's worth the effort to go and tell him again with a group of like-minded individuals. We love you, God. And uh, I'm willing to take out of my busy schedule and my hectic day to come and to worship and to praise you. And I know it's not always convenient or easy, but um, I'm glad I went. I'm glad I went. All right, Luke 7, 47. This is the scripture we're going to talk about today. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, this is Jesus speaking, her sins which are many are forgiven. For she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Before I give you my thoughts on this scripture, I want to give you a little background story of what's going on. Jesus goes to eat in this dude's house. I want to say his name is Simon, but I also don't want to be wrong. He goes into this dude's house. And this woman hears, and she has obviously a bad reputation. Her sins are many. Um, she hears that Jesus is there. And she comes in. And I read I read this, and I know this story, but I reread this Hold on one minute. This sentence a couple of times. Because it said that she oh, stood at his feet behind him. And I kept trying to figure that out. And in my brain, I'm like, she was behind him? I thought she stood in front of him at his feet. So I don't know. And I don't know if I'm just reading it wrong. It was really early this morning, like at 6 o'clock in the morning. 6, 6 6.30 ish somewhere in that vicinity. So maybe my eyes were deceiving me. I don't know. But she winds up washing his feet with her tears, drying them with her hair, kissing his feet repeatedly out of love and adoration and anointing him with oil. Okay. This woman does this the whole time. And it says that the dude's house that Jesus was in thought to himself, Jesus can't, this is in, this is in the Bible, y'all. This is in the same chapter. He's thinking in his mind, Jesus can't be a powerful prophet like we thought he was. Because if he was a powerful prophet, he would know this woman's ill reputation. And there's no way he would allow her to even touch him or to do this or to be in his presence. All right, this is what the dude's thinking. Who knows that? Jesus knows that. So he turns to him. I am pretty sure his name is Simon. He turns to him and he said, Simon, if the name's wrong, just forgive me. The story's right. But he says, I want to ask you something. 
okay? Now, you have to remember, this whole time, Simon is thinking this in his brain. He hasn't said this out loud. He has watched this woman do this. Jesus is sitting at his table, and he's having the salt. All of a sudden, he doubts who Jesus is because Jesus allows this person of ill reputation to be near him, to touch him, to worship him, to adore him, to cry on him, to wash his feet, to dry him, dry it with her hair, to anoint him. He's watching this. He's like, mm -mm. no, a prophet wouldn't get that close to her. And then Jesus begins to speak and he presents a story to him. And this is where the scripture comes in. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loves much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. So he instantly lets him know, I know your thoughts are far off. And I want to let you know that you're not right. That's not right. My thoughts were, I think that sometimes people who have never experienced the darkness firsthand can take God and all of his benefits for granted. As And Christians view prodigals through the wrong lens sometimes. Now, I hesitated to write that because I'm not in the school of thought that says, Oh, you need to leave church. You need to leave church and then come back in order to have a phenomenal testimony or relationship with God. I don't believe that at all. I believe some of the greatest testimonies are God's keeping power of people like myself, who's not perfect, but God kept me. And I've never left his side, ever. Not for anyone, not for anything. Now, I didn't say I hadn't made mistakes, but I've never walked away from the Lord. And I'm grateful for that. That's a testimony. But people who have walked away or people who were born into really horrific situations or whatever, they have amazing testimonies as well. And we have to be careful because... It's kind of like I mentioned yesterday or the day before, like that's what makes marriages so strong is that you go through the bad times together and it's the bad times, it's those experiences that weld hearts together. The good thing, the good times are great, but anybody can get along in good times. Anybody can stick it out when money's flowing and the children are all doing well and your job is the best thing ever and the house note is paid and but what happens to this relationship when someone gets really sick? What happens when someone gets depressed? What happens when uh, someone dies? What happens when you can't pay the electric bill? What happens when you don't have a car? You know, that puts your love for one another to the test. And when love prevails and you make it out on the other side, your bond is a hundred times stronger. Well, think about people in their relationship with God. And I understood what he was saying. Now, it doesn't mean that people who haven't experienced darkness don't have testimonies. I don't believe that's true at all. And I would never say that. And I don't believe that. I believe they have mighty testimonies of God's keeping and saving grace. But what he was saying to this person who in his heart had really decided that he was better than her that Jesus was better than her, but he himself was also better than her. Jesus wanted to let him know, number one, and he goes on to tell him in that chapter, he said, you didn't wash my feet. I came to your house, Simon. You didn't wash my feet. You didn't wash my feet with tears. You didn't dry my feet with your hair. You didn't anoint me with oil. You didn't kiss my feet. And that's all she's done since the moment she walked in the room. What he wanted him to realize is she treated Jesus the way that he deserved to be treated. She was so thankful, so grateful, so humbled. 
She loved him so much, she just laid herself at his feet on that floor and expressed her adoration without any hindrances, without any inhibition. She didn't care. But yet he was sitting there and in his view, holier than her, more saved than her, less sinful than her, and he had failed to do any of those things to Jesus. He had not worshiped. He had not loved. He had not adored. He had not anointed. He had not humbled himself. He had done nothing. And this sinner had completed all of those things. It's a beautiful story. And I think Jesus was trying to get him to see that to whom much is forgiven, they love deeply. Application. I want to remember to be thankful for God's keeping power and love him deeply, knowing that I could easily be somewhere else right now. No matter who you are, no matter what you've been through or haven't went through, no matter what you were born into or weren't born into, it is God's grace and mercy that all of us are where we are at this moment. It is his keeping and saving power that has brought us all out and has kept us. Connecting scripture, Acts 7:58, and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. The connecting strip scripture that I wanted to give you was of Saul Paul, when Stephen was stoned. When Stephen, the Bible says, who was full of the Holy Ghost, preached his last sermon to these people. Saul Paul was there, and when they dragged Stephen, his innocent body, out of that city to kill him, they laid their jackets and their coats at the feet and arms of Saul Paul while they picked up large rocks and smashed Stephen to death. He witnessed it, he condoned it, and he was there. Now, why did I pick that scripture? To whom much is forgiven, that one loves a lot. Look at Saul's life. Whenever God appeared to him and gave him revelation of the truth, he turned around and he devoted his entire life to God. And he preached the truth until the day he was murdered because to whom much is forgiven, he had murdered saints. He had watched Stephen be stoned. He had persecuted, he had killed women and children. He had had women and children murdered. His sin was great. I don't know if you think of Saul Paul that way. He sinned greatly in ignorance, but it's still lives, it's still murder. And when that revelation hit him, don't you know that he felt immense guilt? But he was forgiven. And because he was forgiven, he gave it all. He gave it all, all the way to his last breath. Kingdom, and I'm done. I hope I haven't went too long. Kingdom. Religious people sometimes look down on saved sinners. We're all sinners, but you know what I mean. Because of their faults, thinking that somehow they are closer to God. But the truth is that those people love God more and express it better because of the darkness that they've been delivered from. I don't wanna to have to experience the worst darkness on the planet in, love, in order to love God to the fullest and deepest of my capacity. And I don't think I ever will because I I love God and I'll do anything for him and follow him to the ends of the earth. He's everything to me. But I hope we're all mindful and careful and realize that what we have is amazing, not to take it for granted. And I'm thankful to be living in a light. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been 
so, so good to me.